Hey, hey people, today we're gonna take a look at Kenshi Iceberg. I found it on Reddit, just like all my good ideas. It was made by a guy called Blackbox650. Okay, I'm not gonna explain what are Kenshi and Iceberg, because I think you know what it is, because you wouldn't be on this video. So let's just get into the review. Finally, something good at the beginning. Let's start from the beep. So, who's beep, you may ask? Beep is a hive, hive drone to be more exact. You can find him at Mongrel and take him as a recruit. He has one of the lowest stats in a game, that is 11111. So you have to spend time training him. He has one of the most unique dialogues in a game, so I think you should check him out if you don't know him. But I think you know if you played this game for at least 10 minutes. Narco is Ocran backwards. Okay, I don't I don't think I have to check this one. Hivers use vomit to build. That actually wouldn't be far from the truth because insects and hives IRL just build, um, you know, their nests from their innards, so that actually might be possible. I think I give it like 8 on 10. I can't really be sure about this, but I think it's true. But some instincts also use like uh, fauna to build their nests, so, you know, f feel about it how you want actually. Skeletons can't reset or lose their skills. Oh boy, that's a that's a fun one. I think this should be a bit lower on a scale, but okay. To see this more clearly, we have to split the skeletons in the older ones and the new ones. New ones are those that had a memory wipe that is reset. The older ones that didn't. The older ones have more skills. That is, they can beat you up easily, and the new ones don't have much of them. Maybe they are weaker, but at least they are stable, so you can talk to them like to normal being, while the older ones are clearly obsessed and or have a hatred towards humans or something. So maybe the skeletons really don't want to remember their past because they can go insane. So I think the stats and resetting is actually real. Hmm, something interesting. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be a quick one. First and Second Empire. Okay, I will not explain it because it's too long to explain history of Kenshi. No, I will just say that First Empire was a powerhouse, they were technologically advanced, they fallen because of uh, natural disasters and skeleton rebellion. But we clearly don't know what happened. First Empire was founded by Catlon and his followers, they tried to rebuild the First Empire and study its technology. Second Empire quickly fallen because of humans and betrayals from inside, and now you can find them only in Ashlands. Mongrel founded by escaped Ocranites. No. Okay, okay, maybe it is close to the holy nation and it's hard to get into, but I don't think just escaped people who have no training can build a city there. Many of the guards and people there aren't human, they are shack, skeleton, and hive, so that would be another thing. It's, it, it is actually not that simple, so I give it like 50-50 chance. Athlon and Tin Fist. Yeah, what about him? But seriously, I think this is relating to the to the fact that Catlon and Ten Fists were friends, uh, or should I say great team, but they broke up somehow and nobody knows what happened. Uh, Ten Fist is a guy who fights for the humans and uh, is anti-slaver, while Catlon is anti-human and is the guy who made Second Empire. Letter from Freedom Fighter and Suicide Note. So freedom fighters may appear in the holy nation, especially the women. A player can learn from this letter that women who walk at night without escort in holy nation cities are punished with death. This is an epic Sharia law moment. Now I will show you on the screen what the letter says and not read it because I'm lazy. Okay, now it's time for the suicide note. Letter was written by a holy sentinel about putting a woman to the flame that is probably just beheading her. The crimes written about in this letter are very similar to those referenced in a letter from a freedom fighter, so they are probably and are related. We are closing with skin bandits. Oh, that's gonna be a good one. So, they are skeletons that were insane, they think they are human, they will skin you alive if you, they will find you and wear your skin as their own. Also, they have 100 plus relation with Skeleton Legion and Skeleton Bandits. Also, fan fact, 
Their leader is not skeleton, he's a human, to be more precise, he's a Scorchlander, male. He's completely insane, his name is Savant, and it's uh, he's an interesting character on his own. I, I recommend you checking out him by yourself. Shacks are bioengineered humans made by skeletons. Uh, so I think it's true because some skeletons that survived Chaos Age will not call them Shacks but Enforcers, which is probably because they were police force in the past, uh, genetically made for just, you know, keeping people in the line. Plus, if you take the armor, I mean, their plates and the spikes from them, they look pretty much human. So I think that's another thing. So yeah, I think it's plausible. Harmado's Bard song. The song is real. The character is a woman. And she was a slave in a rebirth. She managed to escape by killing the guards, including the High Paladin. You can also find her in Hang or Trader's Edge. Uh, she hates males, she likes women more, and also hates skeletons for some reason. And you may trigger combat with her if you are skeleton and try to speak with her. Trapped Cage Beast. The beast is actually real. You can add it to Kenshi right now through modding to your game. You can also play it on Forgotten Construction set, so yeah, have fun. Scrapped Boats mechanic. I think it was never implemented, but we have a concept art, so they probably were real. The world of Kenshi is a tidal locked moon. And it's true. It's a fact. Look at this thing. It's a screenshot. You see this? That's a big planet, and there is a smaller one. And where we are? Yep. Yeah. We are kinda small, also the map of Kenshi is kinda small, you can get to another side of the map in one day, so yeah, I think we are Moon. Armor King. First of all, he's my favorite character, and second of all, he's one of the oldest skeletons in the Kenshi. Uh, plus, he's a blacksmith, he has, as he thinks, best armor in the world. Prices in his shop aren't really good for a poor Polish worker, but uh, you can always steal from him, if you can. But the most interesting thing is his location. He's settled over here, in the middle of river, in this building. Yeah, I think that's why it's here. It's it's kind of um, hard to find. I actually find him as my first uh, unique character in game because I just wanted to travel more easier through the land without getting beaten up. So yeah, that's how I found him. Screamer, the real recruit. I think it's a meme. I think it's a joke about Screamer the false because I can't find anything about Screamer the real uh, recruit. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it here. Hivers are made by skeletons. Okay, let's move to the next one. Stobis Okran. So for people that don't know what is Stobe. Stobe is a gigantic robot in a Stobe's garden. He's dead, hopefully. And this theory is saying that a robot is god for the people who hate robots. I don't think it's real. <laughs> let's move to the next one. King Crimper. For people that don't know what Crimper is, it's a gigantic robot that will try to kill you and eat you. So yeah, it's based. Also, one of them is very special, his name is King. He leads the Sovereign Hive. Uh, if you kidnap the uh, Queen of the uh, Sovereign Hive, he will join the siege on your uh, base. So yeah, that's fun. Cross is a skeleton. For people that don't know, Cross is a legendary smith that weapons can be found all over the place. I mean all over, all over the main people in Kenshi. I have no idea if it was he, she, skeleton, human, hive or whatever. We just don't know who that smith was. We probably think it was a woman, so yeah. It's gonna stay as mystery. Kenshi 2 and Second Empire. This is referring to that we will play in Kenshi 2 in the era of Second Empire. And that's really it about it. It's kind of interesting that we will play in that era. Uh, I think it's, it's great. Pirate version corroded iron plates. I can tell from my perspective because I had pirated version. I had no corroded iron plates. So I think that one is fake. Fishmen are the real native intelligent species. They have a king, they are definitely intelligent. Also, how the fuck we know name of that guy? How can we even pronounce a name from a fish? How? How is it possible? They hatch from eggs like most of beings in Kenshi, which I think this is one of the things that makes them native. By the way, they are more crab-like than fish, 
but okay. I think they are native to the island actually. So yeah, you can leave this here. The bug monster is immortal. Well, I must say that on my playthroughs I killed him a few times, so I think he is mortal. Also one fan fact, he's preparing an invasion on the Ashlands, so yeah, that's a madman right there. Western and Eastern Hive Queens are skeletons. I know what you makes think that they are robots and that's a good, good really uh, theory, but uh, they just have metallic parts in them. They are not really robots because somebody has to breed those goddamn hive men. Dried crystal flops. Uh, this is the food that was cut out out of game because something. I only know them because I have a mod that brings them back, so yeah. Ancient nutrations. Yep, they are real. Meme is that they still taste good after thousands of years laying in a bunker, but yeah, there's nothing more to say about them. Green fruits are not fruits. Yeah, we all know that, but why is this here? Why is in <laughs> what the hell? I'm actually going insane. Why there is so many food in this iceberg? What the hell? Flop house. Flophouse was cut from beta because somebody didn't like it, I guess the main creator. We can still find it in uh, game files and place it in on the editor mode. I know about this house from a modding because I was making a city in a Kenshi and I found it in this thing in a game file, so yeah. The building was kinda a tavern when you can like rest and buy some food. So yeah, it's not really that interesting. Fogmen are infected by toxic gas from obedience. I actually think it's real. You may ask why, and here is why, because everybody wears a mask and they got them obedience. Also the hivemen look like dead, so they probably just... got resurrected as dead? I don't know. So yeah, I give it like 8 on 10. Catlon isn't insane. I think he is insane, but he has a bit of right and that uh, humans are monsters. So yeah, it's 50-50. Alright, I see one meme already, can she free? So I'm gonna go for fog ghouls. So I couldn't find anything about him except mod on workshop about messed ghouls. And also I found the story in Holy Nation about missed ghouls running loose in the Holy Plains, so yeah. It's probably just a prank or a scary story. A gigantic skeleton in Stobe's garden isn't Stobe. I think it is Stobe because I think people nearby would see a huge <laughs> skeleton just walking past them, you know? I think the Stobe is dead, F for my boy Stobe. The Whistler scrapped model. So that thing is in uh, game files, we can find it. We have no idea what is purpose of that thing, but it's missing half of its face and it's dead, so yeah. Hobbs tails are real. I don't really think they are real. By the way, Wiki tells us that Hobbs is old <laughs> crazy man, so yeah. So what are those stories? So he tells you about sunken cave south of the dunes where some beast is waiting for you. It's a lot of cash there so you should check it out but I don't think that beast is real because when you leave the you know, town with him uh, and you ask him about the beast he will be like beast what are you talking about? So yeah he's just bluffing. To not make you sad I'm gonna tell you another story from Hobbs. He's speaking about wailing phantom that is deep deep into the forest. What forest you may ask? I don't know. He tells you that it is possible to kill the beast because someone did it before with the other one, so yeah. Desertification will kill all life on the planet. What a joyful subject, eh? <laughs> well, can she is kind of dry land. It's looking like Mexico, so with only few places when, where you can make uh, food. It is really plausible, so yeah, maybe not desertification, but starvation and natural disasters. Crop failures will kill the population on Kenshi, especially because how big is the sun and close to the uh, our moon, so yeah. Agnu is in constant pain. Yeah, me too, me too, I feel you, man. Seriously, Agnu is a unique record that can be found imprisoned by Thrall Masters on top floor. 
of the Tower of Abuse. So yeah, the, the biggest thing is that he can't feel pain. He's a fucking robot. Uh, also, he makes noises of screaming, so... Yeah, it's, it's not really that easy to tell. Game takes place in Proxima Centauri. Maybe it takes place there? We don't know. We actually don't know. There is more continents. It's actually complicated, because there is called a map called Old Map, and it's a map of some fictional continent. But also, hundreds of years ago, Kenshi, should I say, parts of it, especially the swamp and few more areas. So yeah, maybe our character thinks that the old Kenshi is something else. So we are left only with two. The one is a joke, obviously, and the other one is space debris stops everyone from leaving the planet. And I must say, it's probably not real, because the sky is super clear, so we can see everything. And space debris, if it was to stop the spaceships from leaving, it would be massive. So we wouldn't even like see much of the sky, but we are able to see many stars, so I think it's uh, it's just fake. Yeah, that's it. We are done here. There is no more to the iceberg. I kind of want to play Kenshi now. Yeah, that is a good idea. So see you later, maybe in another video.